Hey, what's going on, everybody? I wanted to do another video here. This one's about uh, um, blankets, bedding, uh, towels, uh, and goggles. Oh, and some uh, rain jackets. I switched rooms. That way I can get everything on a bigger table. And it's quieter in here. So I apologize for my breathing like I always do. I don't know how to do it without hearing myself breathe. I listen to these tapes and I hear myself breathe and I apologize. I gotta breathe. And my face is right next to the camera and it picks it up like I'm I'm not fat. I'm not overweight. I don't get it. Alright. Um, first off, I want to go over blankets and bedding. Um, this is... For all our bug-up bags that we make, that we come up with, we always think about, well, we want to have something warm. We want to have something that's tried and tested. But, shit, we want something that's light. So it's a real toss-up. What do we do? How do we work this out? We can't carry everything with us. We'd look like, you know, like a cartoon out there with all this stuff. One of the things I... I started doing is when I put all my stuff into a bag I'm up in the uh, I put all my stuff into a bag I put it in uh, when, when I went out to the desert one time I went up and down a hill with it coming back down the hill I decided I didn't want half the shit that was in there test your stuff out it's very important to test what you have you can listen to somebody else say oh this is the best blanket in the fucking world doesn't matter. As long as you haven't tested it, how good is it? And until you're jumping up and down your steps with your backpack on your back, running full blast with your backpack and all your shit in there, you really don't know what you want. You might want a whole bunch of stuff. You might not. I found that I want as little as possible. This is a wool blanket. Uh, I make these little straps. That's one of your 80% wool blanket, 70% wool, I can't remember what it is, Army Navy store. Uh, as warm as can be. Problem with wool, it's heavy. When it gets wet, it gets even heavier. But, plus side to it getting wet. You leave it outside, and it freezes. You hit, a, you hit your blanket, you roll it up, and you hit it up against a tree or something like that, the ice comes off. You can dry them out really fast as opposed to polar fleece. Polar fleece, when they get wet, they stay wet forever. They're the same size when they're unrolled, but you can see this one is immensely smaller. It's lighter, but it's maybe the same warmth, but like I said, you got your ups, your um, pros and your cons. I advise people when you go out and you buy your blanket, or when you're thinking about your blanket, go to a craft store. That's what I did. I went to Joanne Fabrics, one of those fabric stores. I bought this off a roll. I cut it myself after I got it home. But you can buy a roll, or you can buy a significant size of polar fleece for half the price you can a regular blanket. You go down there, you can pick out whatever color you want, have a lady cut it up, whatever size you want, and then just wrap it up. You get yourself your own blanket. Here is a, another wool blanket. It's half the size of this one. Pendleton wool. Really warm. If you don't mind having your feet sticking out in the outside in the uh, cold air. I thought I'd point it out that even though this thing looks sexy, it's this, ooh, it's this Pendleton wool blanket. Look at the sizes of everything. Look at the sizes of yourself. I love these two blankets. There's no way I'm taking them. I love this blanket. There's no way I'm taking it. It's too much. Here is a polar fleece uh, uh, sleeping bag. Now, I didn't get out all my sleeping bags out of my other room. That would be ridiculous. That's not what this is about. These are about small, compactable 
things that we could take with us. This blanket, uh, this sleeping bag, has a zipper that goes halfway down the length. Warm, very very warm. This is better than these for what it's for to keep you warm. But you can't do anything other than crawl into it and crawl out of it. You're like a burrito in it. You're stuck once you're in it. And once it's all the way rolled up and you compress it as much as you can, it's not much smaller than those. Until I found this. This is a Eureka plus 15 degree hoe back sleeping bag. This is a full size sleeping bag. All it is is just the shell of a sleeping bag. All I'm really interested in is keeping the chill off. And it's something that we need to keep in mind. This is something that is now workable. It's an expensive bag. It's uh, heavy. But it's very small. It's not as heavy as these, though. But it's workable. Check out the compact or backpack type of sleeping bags. I could pull this one out. I'm not going to look this one up online. It's a really handy thing. It's just something that if anybody hasn't thought about it before, this is much easier to carry with you than those. This is a hammock. I've watched a lot of videos about hammocks. People that know how to use a hammock rule. If you know how to use a hammock, mixed with your sleeping bag, you got it going on. I'm not good with hammocks. I don't know how to use them right. I, I just don't have enough time in them, I guess. But, this is an option. If anybody is interested, there's other videos on YouTube where people go over and they can stay out in sub 20 below degree temperature in a hammock. The way that they layer it is awesome. But again, you're talking about bringing up blankets and stuff. This will keep you off the ground, which isn't necessarily a good thing. If you're off the ground, you got cold air underneath you and on top of you. Keep bugs off you, but also now you're like a little pinata in the wind. I'm not going to take it. I'll go over this really quick. This was my be-all, end-all kit, I thought. This is a bag that rolls up. It velcros. cinches down upon itself. But inside, I'm not going to pull it all out, is a tarp. Come on, sucker. You can see inside there is a tarp, a wool blanket, and a single size single person tent. The tent is small. The um, tarp you put on the ground, you put this on top of the tarp, you wrap the tarp over it, you crawl underneath this blanket, you're friggin warm. It works. This works. Again, it's bigger than everything else. Who's gonna pack that? I don't know. I can't. This is for your bug out bag, your I'm never coming home bag. If you want to keep that in your car, awesome. Or your truck, great. But what I've found is that I've tried these things and I've tried hiking with them, tried doing how am I going to fit this in? I mean, these blankets are awesome. How can you not fail? Bushcraft, those videos, blah, blah, blah. Doesn't work. This is my answer. It's a tarp. It's made by, um, I can't remember right now. One side is orange, the other side is the reflective. When I fold this thing up, I can fold it up better. But there's a way to fold that thing so that it actually fits into the bladder section on my backpack. I don't even know it's there anymore. The other thing is timber. I have a piece of Visqueen that I bring with me as well. These two things, when I fold them upright, mixed with that, 
has kept me warm in the open desert at 10 degrees. I'm not planning on staying in the open desert at 10 degrees. I don't know about you. I'm not thinking that this is going to be a third ice age. Whatever kind of situation, I'm going to try to build some kind of shelter, some kind of fire, something. I'm not going to be just sleeping in this without any kind of other shelter like a tree or something. This underneath me, this on top of me, this inside. I'll put a link down when I get a chance about this uh, tarp. Crap, I can't remember the name of it. It's not that expensive. It's like $30. Piece of Visqueen the same size. Pretty cheap. This actually isn't Visqueen. I need to change that. This is a big trash bag. This is an industrial trash bag. Um, and it's... If you guys can bring a big industrial Visqueen, what is that, 3 mil, 4 mil trash bag, that's a really good idea to have. Along with a small expensive sleeping bag like I talk about in all my other videos at this point you don't want to go cheap you get something cheap that's junky Chinese made then you're going to uh, regret it I have these other bags here that you can store stuff in I was going to go over that but I don't need to alright one of the things I want to go over here are towels. Um, during a bug out type situation I was reading on this one, it was called like Captain Bob's story or something like that. He talked about people living off of just granola bars and jerky for length of time. I had done that a couple times when I've been out deer hunting where I've lived off of just jerky and granola bars. Uh, there's something that we don't talk about, something we don't think about. Pooping. What happens when we're pooping? And when you eat just jerky and granola bars, your shit is weird. You change diet. You don't want to be running away from a bad situation or running for help, something like that, with shit in your butt crack, chafing, and getting yourself raw. I'm sorry I'm going to bring it out there. These things are called Splash and Goes. There's a whole bunch of other companies that make them. I have a different one out in my truck. These are those wet towelette things. They're heavy. They're kind of stupid to carry around, but I advise this is something that I am going to carry with me. Sure, they're disposable. Sure, they're going to go away after the first week, second week. That's fine. Because my body's going to start getting acclimated to a situation during that period. I don't want to have nasty balls. They're really cheap, too. Another thing, Kleenex. These little packets of Kleenex that we always seen all the time when we were kids. Something about this, though, I watched on a video, is that you can cut it open and you can pour water into it. We'll let these get soaked and then they act dang near the same thing as that. Maybe they might not have the aloe or the, the whatever. <coughs> but um, it's an idea, too, for somebody who doesn't want to spend the money. You get one of these, two of these, you put these in your backpack, you're sure they're going to go away. You're going to run out of them. But, like I said, until you get used to a situation, until you get, I don't know, so when this kind of stuff was going to happen, if we all have to bail, if we all have to go somewhere, it's going to be traumatic. There's going to be a lot of things. There's going to be depression on top of everything. Not just hunger. Not just fear. Not just, you know, confusion. There's going to be depression. There's something that I always try to bring into things that I've seen on videos that's really important is to keep your spirits up. And you got shit in your butt crack, you're going to feel kind of down. Really simple solution to all this, too. Simple Ziploc bag. Paper towels. Roll them up, pack it in there, and you're going to be really thankful that you have that.
This is one of those quick dry towels. I have like five or six of these. This is the smaller one. This is something that I'm definitely taking with me. They dry out they dry out really quick. Remember the infomercials with the guy? The I don't remember the name brand of the stuff, but he rolls stuff up and dries out his clothes. This is it. It's called a pack towel. It fits in this little mesh bag. Weighs nothing. You blow your nose on it. You can wipe your armpits with it. Stick it in a river. Clean it off. Reuse it. When these things are gone, that's all you're going to have left. Remember, buy the expensive stuff. Alright, now I'm going to go over goggles really quick. These are a pair of goggles that I got from a buddy of mine who's in the military. I did not prepare for this part, sorry. And get that open. I'm going to get this open too while I'm here. Now, these goggles are big, bulky. They're the military type. They come in a case with plastic different shields and stuff. And they're the solid ones. Solid all the way across. I had bought these. I thought these were going to be the one. You can interchange the, the lenses. Yellow, black. They have a strap. They have the... When they sit on your face and they're hugging your face around your eyes, they don't seal. Same thing with these Chinese made ones. I thought these were going to be nice. They don't even fit right. They come with these little... I want to go over goggles how important they're going to be. Um, when you, when we're, it's going to be snowy or it's going to be wind blowing and stuff like that, the person who has better equipment is going to have an advantage. You don't have to worry about some elite soldier who's hiding up in the hills with a sniper rifle, whatever. You don't have to worry about those people. They don't want what you have. The people you need to worry about are cowards. People who will shoot you in the back or take whatever you have. These goggles are going to be really helpful in trying to escape situations where you have an advantage over somebody else. Where you're able to see uh, and not have your eyes be affected by wind or debris. I advise goggles. Goggles, goggles. Get them. If you've ever been out in the snow, out in the sand, good thing to have. And again, don't go cheap. If you have anything like this, try them. Try your stuff out. Oh, I also wanted to go over. Make sure you get yourself like a lens cleaner. A really good name brand lens cleaner. The clean your goggles. Your shirt is going to scratch it up. And after a year, your goggles are going to be junk. Alright. Really quickly here. I don't know how to pronounce this. It's called a Shimagna. It's a big scarf they use in like Afghanistan or wherever the fuck they are. I bought this as off of Amazon, and uh, there's certain ways to tie it, certain ways that you can use it. I ain't taking it. I'm telling you, if, if anybody ever has this stuff, try it out. I've tried that. It doesn't work. These are some uh, brochures that I bought off of Amazon as well, and I saw this on a different channel. But, know the area that you're at. These things will help your morale. Help you with watching the weather. Give you something to look at. First aid. If you can find these, they're expensive. They're like $7 a piece. But get as many as these can. Because information is very... Or, or, or what is it they call it... Uh, you know, just knowledge of what you're doing, how to get out of situations, and uh, they're waterproof. If anybody hasn't heard of these things, you can find them on. They're called the Pocket Naturals Guy. What is this one? Uh, what's the name brand on these? Ah, who cares? The other thing I wanted to go over was ponchos. Let me get this in there. Now, this is a Coleman poncho. It's 
camouflage. This is the second one I owned. The first one I tore the hell out of, but I did it kind of on purpose. This is uh, col uh, Cola Hands. I always screw them up. A little teeny plastic one. This thing actually works. It's half the size. And to get, like in an emergency situation, get back to the truck, get back to your house, this will work. I advise in a bug out bag, you take one of these. Because once it starts raining, how many people are prepared for that? Um, there's different types. There's bigger ones, smaller ones. But this one is called the Adult PVC Poncho by Coleman. Look at the reviews on it. It's a good one to have. And then a mosquito head net. You can find these at your wherever. But it'll cover your head. It adds camouflage, takes away the color of your face, and it keeps bugs out of your ears. It, and I put it in a bag. It's a really handy thing to have. And the last thing I want to go over, um, they have this insect repelling armband. Just slip it on. I fell for it. It don't work. I guess that's it. Um, also, I have a 20-sided die. Uh, anyways, I wanted to go over all this kind of stuff with you, with the, mainly the the bags, the, the tarps. And I thought I'd throw in the other things that I'm carrying with me and not carrying with me as well. I'll make more videos to come. Food and water is coming up. And then I'm also going to go over equipment, things like the shovel, compared to the axe, compared to the spear, compared to the sword kind of thing. Um, then I'm going to do firearms as well at some point. So uh, this is just ideas for people that haven't thought of this. Um, and if uh, anybody has a better idea than me, I'm glad, I'm glad to hear it. Give it to me. Give me criticism. Uh, any questions I can help out with, I will be happy to answer. Um, I'm the ultimate copycat. If anybody has an idea, I will copy it. And maybe we can collaborate. Anyways, some ideas. I hope it helps. Uh, right on.